Tom O'Brien is a senior columnist for Bloomberg Opinion. Uh, Latasha Brown is the co-founder of the Black Voters Matter Fund. And back with us, Mike Collier, the Democratic nominee for Texas Lieutenant Governor. Thank you all to you for joining us. Uh, Tim, I'll start with you. Uh, you have better insights into this. What's going on with the economy right now? It's not black and white. Some areas are soaring. Others are struggling. Uh, explain to us how worried we should be about what lies ahead. Well, we're, we're in a very uncertain time because we have very strong external shocks that no one can control. We've got um, the ravages of the COVID pandemic are still working their way through the economy. There was a, a massive supply chain disruption. Biden cannot control those factors. Those are classically what economists call exogenous forces. The war in, in, in Ukraine uh, is, is causing a massive problem with food supplies. That has inflationary effects, obviously, particularly on food. Um, and, and then I think some of the spending programs, I would argue those spending programs, the government spending programs were necessary. We needed to address infrastructure. We needed to address the needs of working Americans. Those things are now working their way through the economy. Economists are making predictions about what the, the impact of those things will be. But the reality is we're in such an unusual time that most economists aren't certain where we're going. But there is a very good chance that we are going to go into a recession. Uh, the Federal Reserve has been criticized for not responding quickly enough to inflation and, and waiting too long to raise interest rates to deal with it. There is an offset, however, uh, economically when you raise interest rates dramatically. It ends up often resulting in a recession and unemployment and working Americans bear the brunt of that. And I think you've had the Fed over the last few years trying to have more of a balance in terms of uh, looking out for the needs of working Americans and not just being dogmatic about inflation. Inflation now is so present and roaring that they feel they have a need to jack up rates to deal with it. It is likely that that's going to cause a recession, but no one is entirely sure yet. Mike, how do you think the public will respond, you know, as somebody also is out there on the campaign trail to uh, President Biden's comments that a recession isn't inevitable and what we just heard there as well from Tim with the economic uh, forecast? I mean, how do you thread the needle between words of comfort and assurance, but at the same time not sounding dismissive of the concerns of ordinary Americans and working families? Working families are hurting. They're suffering. They're having an awful hard time making ends meet. You know, the, the price of gas is really hurting families and they're right to be concerned. I can tell you my perspective is not only as a candidate uh, who talks to Texans routinely as part of the campaign, but I also make my living in Texas, in the business community, in the energy industry. And I can tell you, and I've been around a long time, and I can tell you that uh, when the COVID hit and the economy basically shut down, the global supply chain shut down, we faced what could have been. A uh, depression as deep as 1929, a recession as deep as we had a decade ago. And I think our policymakers made the right move. Uh, and we find it, I mean, they, they are very aggressive with stimulus. And as a result, we're at nearly full employment. So the good news is people have jobs. But inflation hurts. It hurts quite a lot. And so the uh, Federal Reserve, I think, is reacting to this. We've learned through the lights of history that if the Federal Reserve acts too quickly, it could drive us into a recession and people lose jobs. That's a bad place to be. Uh, if they don't react fast enough, then inflation can just take off like wildfire. And I think they've been handling it very professionally. They moved very aggressive this week. Um, the stock market is not the economy, but you can tell what people are thinking. And you can see that the stock market reacted favorably to that. So I think um, these issues will work their way through. If it's done carefully, conservatively, we won't have job loss avoid recession if possible, but we also must take steps to ease the pain because people are really suffering. It's not their fault. For example, I think we should do something about gas prices. Maybe it's because I'm a Texan. Mm. We're in the energy capital of the world and we're paying too much for gases, uh, gasoline. I'd like to see pol policymakers do something about that. What do you recommend or what do you suggest they do? What can be done to alleviate the short-term pressures that we're facing? We have a supply and demand problem. I mean, when COVID hit, price of oil went down to about zero. Uh, oil and gas companies stopped producing energy. Then all of a sudden, demand comes roaring back, but there's a long lag to build that production back up. So I think we should do a couple of things. First of all, energy companies who are making a lot of money right now, keep that money working, put it to work to bring energy to market. Don't take 
cash out of your companies and buy yachts and stock buybacks and the rest. You've got to do right by this country and bring more energy to market. Point number one. Point number two, we should invest very aggressively in electric vehicles. We know we're headed there. Uh, it's going to be very attractive to people in a commodity price environment like this to buy an electric car. We should be aggress- investing very, very aggressively uh, to deal with the demand side of the equation. It will also be very good for the climate and so many other good things. But we must understand doing those two things affecting supply and demand will take time. And time is not what Texans want to hear about. And so there have to, has to be ways, in my judgment, for direct subsidies to underwrite the high cost of gasoline. And there's several proposals out there. I'd like to see more work done on them. Uh, I haven't studied which are the optimal programs, such as gasoline cards. You hear about other ways that you can give people direct relief temporarily to get to the other side of this equation. I'm calling on policymakers to lead that charge and give us some ideas that we can chew on. Latasha, one person uh, told the New York Times, quote, you always want to do better for your children than what you had, and you want them to have more opportunity and be in a better position in life. And I felt like I was headed that way. And now I feel like we've been uh, kicked back down the mountain we have the whole mountain to climb again. Uh, your thoughts on the state of economy and the messaging that needs to go around with it, as, we, as we've tried to discuss here, mm-hmm. the realities and the, and the perceptions can sometimes be varying, even though ordinary Americans are feeling the pinch. You know, I think there's a couple of things. One, I think there's a disconnected way we see and judge the health of the economy. You know, we look at how the GDP is doing. We look at how the unemployment rate is doing. What we're not looking at is the measurement of people's lives. But there are people suffering. Today, I was just at the Poor People's Campaign March that they had in Washington, D.C., and there were tens of thousands of people that were there actually testifying. Many of them testified around how in this moment, and not just in this moment, it has been over a period of time where they have actually suffered, that they are working people, but they're not making the kind of money they need to take care of their families when we're seeing housing prices soar, right? when we're seeing gasoline soar. And so I think what is really important is for us to really understand that there's a disconnect that necessarily saying the health of the well-being of the stock market does not reflect what people are feeling in their day-to-day lives. And so there is a reality around what the numbers are as it relates to unemployment and other indicators, but there's also a reality of what people People are feeling when we're seeing a rise in homelessness, where we're seeing a rise in the economic pinch go to the least of these in our community. And, and yet it seems, Latosha, that the uh, Republicans don't want to step in and help with some of these issues that you're talking about, whether it's homelessness or some of the things that can alleviate the suffering of people in this country. They don't want to necessarily help people. They just want to complain about the price of things going up and trying to blame it strictly on Joe Biden. Not only do they not want to help people, in many ways, when you look at their policies, it seems like they hate people. At the end of the day, when people are working, why should, why should people not get paid a fair wage so that when they're working, they can pay for a home for their family or a place to stay or their basic needs? When we're looking at what we know is a big economic pull on families, it's health care. There's a refusal to expand health care. And when you look at the Republican states, many of them refuse to, to, to expand ACA. They have not... They have been consistent in showing that they care about profit over people. And what we have to do as a nation is we're going to have to be honest about when we're talking about the economic well-being of this nation, it has to be based on the economic well-being and health of the people that are in this nation and make up this nation and our workers. And if they're essential workers, then we should treat them and we should pay them as such. Uh, Mike, Latasha, Tim, I'm going to ask you to stick around. We're going to squeeze in 